Hi, and welcome to this webinar. Today we are talking about how you can supercharge your data. And we will tell you five steps on how to become more data driven uh, by leveraging your CRM. Um, my name is Jeanette, and I work with uh, the product marketing team here at SuperOffice. And we're joined by Hans Christian uh, Grönsle, uh, which is the director of um, digital customer experience here at SuperOffice. And uh, previously, he worked with, uh, where he was the commercial director of SuperOffice Norway and also had a commercial responsibility for the SuperOffice online team, um, also responsible for launching our cloud offering. And now he works with uh, commercial insights and analyzing white spaces. And he has also implemented tools and processes for MPS, uh, also a system called Heartbeat, which measure the user adoption and uh, engagement, and also now have introduced new KPI dashboards for our sales and consultants internally. So he's a true data evangelist, uh, and he loves to democratize data. And uh, so in this session, he will, ex uh, or he will share experiences on how you can successfully uh, start your data or data-driven journey, uh, and also build a culture that acts on data. So welcome Hans, Hans or Hans Christian. Wow, thank you, Jeanette. That was a very uh, nice introduction. And it, um, well, it uh, reminds me of a great journey I've had in SuperOffice uh, so far. And uh, with this supercharger data, that's just, you know, uh, bringing on the future even uh, more. So um, thank you for inviting me and I'm happy to share with some of my uh, insights on this topic. Yeah, great to have you. And I'm very excited to, to hear what you have to say and uh, your experience. And for those that don't know SuperOffice, SuperOffice CRM is a CRM platform for business growth and is built on over 30 years of experience. And the CRM platform combines all your customer facing processes like sales, marketing and customer service into one tech stack. So we're a Norwegian company uh, with HQ in uh, Norway, but we uh, are also present in eight other European countries. And we help over 6,000 businesses increase their productivity, uh, create a positive customer experience, and build profitable and long-lasting relationships. And these uh, sessions, these supercharged sessions, is uh, we're talking about specific processes to achieve growth, to help you achieve your goals, and also improve processes and challenges. Uh, you have in your business. So today we're focusing on the data and we are also focusing on how to become data driven. So quickly we'll give you a short introduction to the agenda and we will start by talking a little bit about what it means to be data driven and why should companies uh, consider working data driven. And then we will also give you just a quick five step um, guide on how you, your company can get started to work data-driven, and also how to leverage data you already have in your CRM system. So if we start at the beginning, kind of what it means to work data-driven. Um, the term data-driven means that a company makes tactical and strategic decisions based on data. And I'm interested to hear uh, your thoughts on this, uh, Hans Christian. What, what does it mean to you? And uh, what, what does it mean that a company works data-driven? Well, that's, that's a great question and it's a huge topic. But yeah. uh, let me start with, if you're not data-driven, that means that very often, you know, it's the hippo syndrome that the person in the room with the highest salary has, has their gut feeling and their way of doing things and thinking about things. But being data-driven, then you look more into what kind of data do you have in your organization to, to make valid decisions uh, and to base your decisions on? And uh, that is a journey because all companies have data, uh, but not all companies have good or easy access to, to data. So um, one story from SuperOffice was that, you know, in the old days, we, uh, we also sent email to, to customers. And, um, our database was sort of not based on uh, automatic actions. And we all always had to sort of uh, create the draft of the email 
uh, list and then send it off to all the contacts and the customer responsible people and they had to delete and remove and add and stuff like that and after three days we were ready to send it um, shifting to being data driven means that we can in a blink know that the data is up to date and we know who we should send to uh, because we have the data and we need to trust the data but going from not being data driven to data driven is a journey so you have to do small steps in order to sort of trust your data. And, and that's really the journey you're going on. Yeah. So not collect, uh, well, you shouldn't just collect data, but the right data, right? You yeah, need to focus. that's focus. right. Yeah. And you need to think about it. And the data should sort of support uh, your processes and, and maybe the customer journey. What, what type of data points are you getting along? Uh, that you can use in order to develop your customers uh, for the future, because that's really what it's all about, enabling success for any company's customers, in my opinion. Yeah. And you, we actually had this talk earlier, and you, you told me that you, you're a data evangelist and uh, you're not a data scientist, right? Um, and that's kind of one important aspect as well, because you need, the data needs to be accessible. And it needs yep. to be, yeah, it's it not just numbers, but you have to understand the data. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, a lot of people have a lot of data. All companies are just, you know, bunches of data. Uh, they're collected. You don't know, really know what you want to use them for. Uh, and then uh, there is a layer between you as a user and the actual data. It's locked behind uh, some systems you don't have access to. You don't understand it. And they might be in different systems. And if you try to combine it, you end up in an Excel spreadsheet and you do a lot of data mining. And in the end, it becomes uh, slow and it becomes a threshold for anybody who's not this data scientist uh, to work with them. So mm -hmm. our experience is that, you know, we spent 30 years plus uh, creating uh, what we call a pretty good CRM system. But it's for now that we can enable a tool that allows people, anybody in the organization to find these uh, data, combine the data, because the system has uh, created the structure. They've mined the data so that I can use it. And that is a pretty, um, you know, that's important for any tool, because if you can master that, then you can uh, make magic with the data for the organization. Yeah. Yeah. So you need the, the culture as well, I'm guessing, to, to kind of make, uh, to, to work successfully uh, with uh, the data. Yeah, yeah, and uh, culture is a key word here. Uh, there was another story I heard from a customer and he said that, you know, in order to create this culture, to, to add stuff into your systems, he said that, you know, if it hasn't happened or if it's not in SuperOffice or it's not in your CRM system, it hasn't happened. And, and, you know, sales organizations, um, you know, if you, if you get a lead and um, you thought that, well, this lead I've been working on, but you haven't added that lead in the CRM system, you haven't added any activities on it, then anybody could take that lead. And this creates a culture. If, uh, if you start, you know, showing data from your systems in a sales meeting or in a board meeting, and if you show systems or show the data, then you know that you have to rely on the data. So that's also a tool to become more data driven and become more data uh, quality driven. Yeah, that's a great input. Yeah. And, and that's where I use this word democratize data. You know, it's just not for one or two persons. It's actually for everyone. Yeah, that's very important. So that brings me to the next one, like why should companies become data driven? Why is it so important? I mean, it's a, it's a buzzword. Uh, a lot of people are talking about data. And uh, a Forrester um, um, survey uh, said that data driven organizations are 162% more likely to surpass revenue goals and 58% more likely to beat their revenue goals than non-data driven counterparts. And that's a, I would think that's a, a great reason why you should work um, more data driven, right? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, um, I think that in a sense, if you are data driven and you measure things in your company, uh, then you have 
then you set goals and if you set goals and you have a, an organization that tries to find out what should we do to reach the goals then i think you're in a good state of actually reaching them uh, instead of you know going a little bit this direction and then a little bit the other direction so uh, so i'm not surprised by these statistics at all um but i also see that a lot of companies you know they have their top line uh, goals maybe some profitable goals uh, and that's what they focus on like sales and sales budgets and then they don't really know why they don't reach it uh, or why they did reach it and you know maybe companies are good at setting goals on the top level but what about trying to find uh, the kpis that is directing you towards reaching these goals and i think that's an improvement point for many companies breaking down to to sub goals uh, so that you actually can visualize what you do in order to reach the the big goals yeah so i think that's uh that's a natural second step uh, when you try to uh, to go into this uh, data driven world an yeah. example an example could be you know a sales budget um is high or low or whatever normally the thing is that it all is always higher than last year but what you need to do in order to reach that goal you need to break it down it means that well how many prospects do you need what is the average uh sales uh, or order that you have how, what's your hit rate uh, close rate and you know if you build it down that actually takes it uh, into how many meetings you need every week in order to fill that uh, main goal down the line and mm -hmm. in order to reach that you need to measure it on a regular basis so that you can see that what you do generates uh, the right result in the end and if it doesn't do then you have to change your tactics yeah, and it helps you to set uh, realistic business goals, basically, uh, and uh, like not rely on your gut feeling, so you have something concrete to work on. Yeah, and you might say that you know, typical sales department is that uh, you have five or ten or fifteen different people, and if they all sort of, they all have the same goal, but they have different ways of getting there, and and that's why I think some of these customers who have success in this way, they they discuss what the what it takes to get the whole organization there instead of five people in experimenting then you set the the process right and then everybody goes uh, in the same direction and then you can see that it works it, it makes it scalable in a totally different way that if you just let people do whatever they want and then in the end hope to reach the the goals that the company have set yeah but it also it's easier to measure what works and what doesn't work in yeah. that process that is true and uh, I would think like another thing is you can better understand the customer experience and how the customers behave and uh, also track performance so you get better control. Yeah, you, you can. And, and that's, uh, you know, what I mean by breaking down uh, what it takes to have a good customer experience. Uh, it means, for instance, that uh, in a customer journey, you, you should have with your biggest customers, you need to have quarterly uh, business reviews, maybe. Um, and then if I'm a salesperson, I can easily track which of my VIP customers have not yet had this review. And by measuring this, then I can easily be on top of every big process because good customer service doesn't mean good service for everyone. You need to split it up. You need your top, top accounts need to have more uh, relationship based uh, activities and your uh, smaller accounts might be more automatic and based on self-service and stuff. And um, I know being in a sales department and being a sales guy, you have so many things that you can think of, but you really need to be in front of what matters the most. And that's where also, if you if you have track of your data and control of your data, that can pinpoint your day, you know, or week or month. Yeah. And you also introduced the, the, the KPI dashboards uh, internally in SuperOffice and, and you talk about white space. That's another benefit of working data-driven, right? Natalia, yeah, that is. That? Yeah, yeah that's, that's interesting because, you know, in a normal CRM system, you, you talk about uh, quotes and, uh, and opportunities and you talk about activities and uh, meetings and all that stuff. But, you know, most companies also have ERP systems. And in ERP systems, that's where you track what you sell to your customers. And, and most companies, they have 
more than one product uh, and if they have one more than product their customers can need then you really under, need to understand what are the white space the products we have that our customers don't use that they would benefit from and if you uh, put these things into the system as well that means that when i talk to my customers or i prepare my next qbr uh, meeting with them i could easily understand uh, you know uh, you're in a typical business we have other customers in this business and they're using this and that and i can argue a case where it would be beneficial for this customer to to use some of the other products so you need to be considered a, a resource or um, a person who wants the best for their customers, right? You're not here just to sell your products because you can reach your targets. That's secondary to what actually brings the customer value and helping your customers to grow will in the end help you as well. Yeah, it's a great input. And you can also, you can always use your database, I'm guessing to find these, uh, these opportunities but working more and more with data you get it's easier to pull out in both reports and dashboards and uh, in this case people can start working on right away yeah you, you don't have to wait wait for your di data scientist but you know if you have some pre-prepared stuff uh, and then you can analyze your own own thing but i think the best thing would be you know talk to your peers talk to your sales department think in a common way um, because it's too easy for people to be, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. But if you share your thoughts, discuss, have hypotheses, test them out, um, then it becomes more interesting to work in a sales department and you feel that you, what you do and what you ask, silly questions or good questions, are benefiting the whole team. Yeah, that's great. So that uh, brings me to another one, which is, um, What's, because that's another thing, people usually say they work data-driven uh, or they collect data, uh, but I feel like there's many people still uh, maybe feel a little bit anxious to, to introduce this to the whole company and working really data-driven. So what's holding companies back or people back? Do you have any ideas? Well, I guess there are a couple of things that strikes me uh, because uh, of course lack of time is always an issue you know if you talk to people about this they never have time and and it's like you don't want to stop uh, take a deep breath think about what's working and what's not working so so every organization needs time out uh, every once in a while to think where they are in order to improve what they have and where they want to go uh, but i also think that um people are afraid of, uh, of of systems they don't have access to the data uh, they might get an excel spreadsheet but it's not uh, you know maybe they have three different spreadsheets and it's it's fragmented uh, data and uh, you know and i can see you know from our own experience as well that uh, people tend to use just a tiny little bit uh, of of systems and then uh, what I say to my colleagues is that, you know, look over the shoulder of a colleague and see what they're doing and uh, discuss how it can, you know, because you can do things differently. And, and then, in, then in the end, you just need to try to sit down and, uh, and see what your systems offer and then work with that. Uh, and, you know, little data is better than no data. And I think that if you, if you can present one dashboard in any system, that creates the second question. And that's what I say when we, or see when we've implemented dashboards now in a new way in SuperOffice, that when you present something to a manager or to a account manager on different levels, it generates interest, right? You always get a next question. And that's the you know prerequisite that you can always dig a little bit deeper. And that way people will understand the impact what they're doing is on the top line, for instance. Yeah. yeah, and you mentioned a little bit earlier as well that many companies still do focus on like one important KPI only or just top line yeah. um, and maybe not the influential metrics or activities. Yeah. Um, that's kind of also, I think, uh, maybe just, just it's the revenue and nothing yeah. else. Yeah, it's the revenue. So, so that means that you're stuck to your own budget and your own uh, you're, you're, you know, you need to f uh, fix yourself uh, with your budget. But then, you know, 
again, mature companies, they have uh, compensation plans that perhaps uh, say that, okay, my compensation is my sales, but it also my group sales, right? My team. Mm -hmm. So if it's on my team, then I need to help other people uh, reach their targets. And maybe uh, like in super office, if you're a salesperson, you also get sort of uh, compensated uh, by other parts of the organization, right? So, so they all work outside their, uh, they work with their own stuff, but they are uh, benefited from customers really having success with their products in, in different ways. Mm -hmm. And that needs yeah. to be measured. Huh? And that needs to be measured, right? So yeah, it, need, it needs to be measured. Otherwise, yeah. it's not, you know, it's just good thoughts. Yeah. And you've also mentioned that with the, the spreadsheets and Excel. I'm guessing that many still do that. And I'm not saying anything bad about Excel. That's a great tool. But it's not very easy to navigate an X or a spreadsheet. Um, but many still do and report in Excel. Do you have any tips? Do you, do you think that's a, a focus that, People need to shift the way they report. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, uh, for instance, uh, visualizing your data on a big screen in a meeting mm -hmm. automatically uh, changes this attitude or culture because you cannot hide behind that, oh, my, it's not updated. Well, updated because the dashboard, for instance, would, would show real data, live mm -hmm. data, right? So. Um, a spreadsheet you can always it's a week old or two weeks old or it, something is not updated and then you have to update other things the data is is, uh, is scattered around in the organization if, if you look at the data inside so when you have a one-to-one -one, if you're a sales manager and you have a one-to-one -one meeting with their sales person well look into the data don't look on spreadsheets for that uh, matter because if, if if you look on the data then you will see where the gaps are as well like, for instance, you will see that um, uh, what are the reasons why people buy from us? Mm -hmm. And then you might say that 50% of the reasons are not filled out. Well, what's the reason for that? Because if you got that data point when they close the deal, you will benefit from it rather than never having that data updated in the system. Yeah. And that's another thing, like maybe data is not connected, um, so they don't get that 360 degree view um, if they live in separate spreadsheets. Yeah, that's that true. Also be one kind of ne negative aspect of it um, that people need to kind of focus more on, on collecting and gathering data and, and democratizing it so it's accessible. Yeah. And then you're on maybe one point where where uh, this people think data is difficult and sometimes it is and yeah. and you have different quality because you have you know normally when you present data in a structured way then somebody is cleaning up the data tidying up the data uh, sorting the data deleting what is not uh, so if you don't have a system for that it it makes it hard and then you need that resource so if you have a system that helps you tidy up your data, it still needs a culture to fill it in, but, but that's something that you have to work with all the time. Uh, but, but you need a tool that can make it easy uh, or easier to, to understand. But you have to be interested, of course. If you're not interested in data, then leave it to somebody else. Yeah. So to summarize a little bit, and we talked about this, like the five uh, steps, to, to start working data-driven is, uh, of course, the first one is to know what it means to be data-driven. And uh, hopefully we've uh, uh, some light on that today. Um, and also, I think it's important that you write down what you want to track and improve. You need to have that uh, strategic plan um, and start, you can start small, but you need to kind of have um, some small steps uh, written down. And also, I think it's very important to embrace new technology and processes, um, being open to new ways of doing things, um, and also connect things. And I'm, that's why we're also so fan of being in the cloud, uh, because it's so much easier. You can use Sapier, or uh, we also have a, another app uh, in our app store called DataBridge, where you can connect and, and really uh, synchronize data. And um, that also means that you need to stop storing and archiving everything in your uh, email inbox. So you need to kind of, you need to be um, great at actually archiving and updating 
the CRM system uh, or other systems, of course, if you have more to collect that data. Mm. Absolutely. And, yeah. And also, you were in, uh, we talked about this, uh, about culture. You need to disrupt the culture uh, and also kind of focus on what's in it for me, like uh, flipping the equation a little bit from focusing on the data solely, but also what the company needs to uh, what data do I need to do my job better and mm. to, to look for new opportunities and to mm. up my sales game, for example. Um, and what problems can I solve with data? And for that, you also need updated data, right? You need to know what kind of data you need in your uh, daily work. Yeah, and, and just a comment there, just an example would be, if I'm a, a salesperson, right? It, yeah. Then I would really like to know if I have 100 customers, I'm responsible for 100 customers. I would really like to get insight into, you know, what are they talking to customer service or, or support about? And it's not that I'm minding or digging in, but, but you know, if I see a trend or my biggest customer, they have problem on support, you know, then I can maybe intervene and help in doing that. And that means that support and me as a sales or consultant, we're all working together. And it's not that I have to ask for a report, I can just see it right there in the system. Uh, yeah. So it helps, again, the customer to, to be taken well care of uh, by any, any company. Yeah. And also, finally, the start simple, right? You need to use uh, simple standard dashboards and reports, and you can build upon that as you go um, and introduce uh, more data to the company. Um, and once your company is comfortable uh, working with the data, you can also take it to the next level by customizing um, more dashboards, uh, more finer details, and um, get better insights and control. Um, and I've made just a, a short introduction, not to SuperOffice, but how we can use dashboards and the data that's inside the CRM system uh, to give you some inspiration how that might look like. And so we're just uh, going to show a short video now to see how that might look like. And we will um, jump off the screen for a moment and then we will come back on. In your CRM system, you usually have tons of useful data and customer history. And in SuperOffice, you get dashboards so that you can quickly get started and get that overview of how your business is performing. And you can create dashboards from scratch, or you can use ready-made templates. And today I will show you some examples of essential KPIs you can measure in your CRM system. And as you see here, we have different dashboards set up. So this one, KPI dashboard is our most important KPIs. And this is for the whole organization and it's more high level. But we can also make one for the sales team or we can make one for each individual salesperson so that we can break down goals and they can work towards their specific targets. But let's focus on the KPI dashboard now. So the first dashboard is value of sales by source for the last three months. And this is great to understand where our sales are coming from. And as we can see, recommendation is by far the biggest contributor. And then we also have win-loss rate by source. And to the right here, we can see the closing rate per month. We also have average deal size per month. And of course, sales year to date. Next, let's take a look at customer activity. So you can get an overview of new, forgotten and lost customers. To the left, we have a dashboard showing companies without activities the last three months. So when we register activities in SuperOffice, like phone calls and meetings, these are linked to companies. So if we haven't registered anything the last three months for specific meeting types, or specific company categories like A, B and VIP customers, this will show up here. And it's quite alarming if you have 14 VIP customers without any follow-up. So you can take immediate action here and schedule phone calls. We can also see new customers registered this month and lost customers this month. This will also give you your churn rate. 
And then we can take a look at customer experience with Net Promoter Score and customer support performance. So for those that use SuperOffice service to handle all incoming requests in one place, that categorize, prioritize, assign and process tickets in SuperOffice, we can see some important KPIs here. And the first is average number of messages per request. And as you can see here, this is per month. And we want this number to be as low as possible because you want the customer to have a great experience. And usually we want to try to avoid the flip-flopping and messaging back and forth. And the next is average time to close. And this is also an important KPI to show how effective the team is working. We can also see how satisfied our customers are with us as a business with average MPS score. And we can also see MPS detractors per month, passives per month, and promoters per month. Now that was some examples of essential KPIs, but there are still two missing. So let's go back up to sales performance. and We will add some new ones here. So I will go to and add a new tile. And as we can see here, we have a set of templates that we can add directly. So I will go to sales. And here I can search from the list or I can search here. So I can add my pipeline, the next three months, actual amount, weighted amount by sale type or total pipeline value. So I will add by sale type and it will add directly here to the grid. So here I can see my pipeline the next three months by sales type, sale to existing customer and sale to new customer. And I can also drag this to make it bigger. Now we can add a new one and we can add from a template or we can also add one from scratch, but let's add group revenue this month. We can go in and change the data set and the layout of the dashboard. So here I want to see sale this year. I will remove the user group and I will add only sales to new customers or prospects. We can add a sales type and then we add a sale to new customer. Then we can continue to the layout And we can add it as a column chart. And we want to also compare it to period previous year. Then we can add a title. and save. We can adjust the tile and we're done. So now we've seen some essential KPIs you should be measuring in your CRM system and also how easy it is to set up dashboards in SuperOffice. Yes, so that was uh, some examples of uh, KPIs we can use in SuperOffice uh, with our dashboards. Uh, but to get there, we also need to uh, know what to measure. Uh, so you need that plan. You need to collect the right data. And for that, you also need to set up the system and um, the fields and activities uh, to show these types of data. Um, because it's easy to convince yourself that you need to measure everything, as we mentioned before. So um, Hans Christian, you've made some great dashboards in our own internal systems for, um, for both uh, consultants and for our uh, account managers. Um, do you have any tips um, on how and where do you start uh, with your CRM system and, uh, and the data you find there? Well, first I have to give you kudos, uh, Jeanette, uh, for the dashboards you created in this uh, video. 
and Thank and it just reminds me uh i think we nailed a pretty cool way of of doing this and, and you pointed out two things you need to understand the data set you know what are the data and there are different sources there and then you have to easily define how do you want to to look for the user and you can mix and match uh, this uh, very simple so you can it's easy to design and redesign and, and make it yours uh, on the fly here but i think that you know uh, it, how where do you start i mean uh, if you look at the customer journey everybody's talking about the customer journey and uh, it starts in marketing right you, you want to get some uh, uh mailings out there you want to do some forms you don't want to you know connect customers early on to to get some interest um you can also do that for for existing customers you have to 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 categorize customers and prospects for instance and then uh what are you doing with these well then you have some activities it could be um forms it could be meetings it could be different things that you do with your customers and you need a workshop in my opinion uh, mm -hmm. gather somebody in marketing somebody in sales somebody in customer service uh, that knows the journey together and then map it all out in, uh, in 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 steps and and most likely you have done this when you implemented any system you might revitalize it and then uh, try to check out these data points how do they show up in uh, in possible dashboards uh and and using um dashboards or data is an ongoing journey uh we we see uh, some customers they they contact us every year because they've changed their strategy and tactics and they want to have the system to to mirror what they do and then we have other people who most likely do the same thing but they don't reflect it in the in the crm or their systems because it's yeah. too cumbersome or it's uh, we don't know what to do nobody's responsible they quit or whatever but you really need to it's a muscle that you have to train and you need to get these things working together uh, bit by bit so uh, so i think that's a, a good part and then you know if you if you uh, try this out and start very small start what are the most important thing that you could show and you visualized customers who have not had activities for instance i mean that would be a no-brainer to to uh, okay if i'm a sales guy i'm going to call one of these customers every day until that list is zero and you will have a fun time because you talk to people they will be surprised by somebody's caring and talking to me and wondering how i'm doing uh, and then you can check that bucket off and then uh, you go on to to looking at the, your pipeline and how can I move my pipeline further down down the line? Use data for that as well. Um, and then, you know, when they are a customer, what touch points do we have? Do they have a support request that is not answered? What type of su support request? Make that easy categorization as well. And then you can sort of find out what are they talking about? What are they caring about? And then trying to change your business to to reflect those things you, you need to make it easy to be a customer yeah good point yeah and also it's about the culture again right because you need to use this data you can have your personal dashboards but it's a, a great thing to to show in meetings and like on a big screen and uh, like stop using those uh, excel sheets that's uh, sent via email and uh, start using what's in the crm system yeah yeah so next time next time somebody tells you or asks you or comes up with a good idea and then you can actually challenge and say hey how do you know that what does our data say um you know because if you have data small data it, it tells you a lot that you can act on yeah. yeah so and we talked about this with the activities i think uh, many do uh, register this and and it's so important because if a person quits right and uh, it's not in the crm system um it's it's very important that you have that culture that everyone knows that you need to update the, the data and also what type of data it's needed so mm. that everyone's aligned on that so it's just you don't just collect data but the right type of data yeah I think that's good, like you said, with the, the mini workshops, right? You need to start mapping out your activities and your goals, and then you need to update the system to reflect that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mo most, and if uh, and my point is that 
just imagine if you if you already use SuperOffice, but you don't use dashboards. I mean, just mapping what you have uh, is a fun exercise. And and normally I said, show me your contact card, company card, you know, and I will tell you what kind of salesperson you are. Now show me your dashboard, and, and I can tell you what kind of business you are. So you can really just do it very simple. Uh, like you did slice and dice and then have great conversations uh, with one sort of uh, tile and you will be surprised and amazed you have a lot you have you have a gold mine already so just make sure that you can start getting it out get that first uh, thing going yeah and also you can review later on and you can change either yeah. you like you said people change processes um, or you you kind of are more aware of what kind of data you need you can start mm -hmm. adding more and more dashboards or yeah, uh, yeah. data sets, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Definitely. Great. Mm. So I think that's a wrap for today. I think we talked about like how, why should you work more data driven? Um, and how can you start like the five steps um, to be more aware of how you can work data driven to disrupt the culture and also start simple, right? Um, mm. And also tips to to leverage your CRM system because, like you said, it's a gold mine. You already have a, lots of uh, great data, hmm. um, and then you can just add more uh, sources. Uh, do you have any more uh, tips? Final uh, thoughts uh, on the topic? Well, I think that uh, this is a thing that you just need to get started. Uh, you have to think with yourself that yes, I can do it, and if I cannot do it, I just do uh, try, try it out. Nothing is yeah. disrupted with their database. Uh, you can, you know, add and create and delete. So, uh, but but always uh, try to get a colleague, uh, maybe your manager or something, to to discuss what are we actually looking for. Maybe you, if you're the responsible person here in your company try to sit in on your next management meeting. And what are they talking about? How can I sort of visualize this with the data? Because there are so many interesting points. And, and think about it uh, in terms of how can I document whatever we do with, with data? Then it becomes interesting and uh, people will get interested in being data-driven as well. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's not a silver bullet, but it's a really important tool to be able to uh, uh, develop your company in the right direction. Yeah, that's great. So what's next for, for everyone that's, uh, that's uh, wanting to learn more about the topic? Um, then I would suggest you read our blog. We have a blog uh, that's not focusing on CRM in particular or SuperOffice, but it's uh, what's happening in the, uh, the, the market and a lot of uh, great tips and uh, uh, research on different topics in uh, sales, marketing, and service. So that's um, a great tip if you want to learn more. Also, uh, reach out on LinkedIn uh, if uh, you want to chat with us. And of course, uh, Hans Christian, I'm guessing uh, you're open to, um, to have a conversation if uh, someone wants to talk more about uh, data. Um, yeah, definitely. LinkedIn as well and reach out. Uh, and also we have uh, great CRM experts on our team that can talk about your CRM strategy if you want to discuss how to get started with data and, and uh, also implementing this in your CRM system. And also we will follow up with some more relevant content uh, on this topic that we will send uh, by email. So also check your inbox. So that's a wrap for today. Uh, thank you for joining and uh, this talk about the data driven and how to start. Um, and I wish you all a super day. And thank you, Jose. Great, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.